The Labor Department has released the latest jobs numbers for the month of July. It shows the U.S. economy added 1.8 million new jobs last month. This signals economic growth despite a surging number of coronavirus cases nationwide. In addition, the unemployment rate has fallen to its lowest point since March at 10.2%. CBS News business analyst Jill Schlesinger joins us now to go over these numbers. Hi, Jill. Thank you so much for being with us. So what does this latest jobs report mean for the U.S. economy? Well, let's take a big picture. If we go back to early the uh, virus hit, we lost 22 million jobs between March and April, a crazy number amount. And, you know, of course, that makes a ton of sense, right? If you just lock down an entire economy, job losses will ensue. We then saw jobs pick up in the following two months, and that's really good news. I think in May and June, we were really looking forward to this 7.5 million job bounce was really good news. And now in July, we've got a bit of a deceleration, 1.8 million. And I think this is consistent with what Jerome Powell, the Federal Reserve chairman, has warned, and that is, however the virus goes, the economy will follow. In other words, it's not as if we can mm -hmm. disentangle ourselves from the pathway. And frankly, when we saw a surge of virus in the South and the West, we had to expect that job growth would slow down a bit. So we're happy. 1.8 million is a huge number in a normal time. It's just that that big deceleration is a bit of a warning sign. Right. And so which industries, Jill, then, are we seeing the most growth? Or sh should we not call it growth? Should we call it rebound, recovery? <laughs> well, I think that that's exactly right, because if you look at the restaurant industry or you look at retail or you look at personal services like a hair salon, a barber shop, laundromats, you know, if you put those categories together, that accounts for about 50 percent of the job growth that we saw in July. And what's a little bit nerve wracking about that is I would really be cautious going forward, because if we are seeing the virus spread, maybe now in the Midwest, that those numbers are going to actually be a little bit less robust. And I just want to point out, we've got a, a nice chart up here about government jobs. That government job number is quite misleading. It is due to a quirk in the way the Labor Department reports. It also probably indicates that teachers, because that would be included in government jobs, teachers were probably laid off earlier in the cycle than normally in the summertime months. So again, put it all together and we see that these numbers are good. We don't want to count on this continuing forever, but we still have 12.9 million fewer jobs right now than what we had in just February. Right. And so, Jill, as you know, last week that extra $600 unemployment benefit expired for millions of Americans across the country. Congress continues to debate the details of the next stimulus package. And one of the points is a growing debate as to whether that benefit is actually keeping people from looking for jobs or going back to their jobs, because it is true in many cases, for some people, that's more income than they were making at their jobs. What more can you tell us about these concerns? Because the other side of that is, well, yes, that you know depends on whether they have any job to go back to at this point. Well, exactly right. And I think it's important that we can cite a number of different institutions and researchers, Yale University, the Federal Reserve Bank of Chicago, University of Pennsylvania, all now debunking the notion that more money in unemployment benefits dissuades people from looking for a job. And quite the contrary, when looking at these numbers, we find that people who have more security with that extra money are looking even more than those who don't. Kind of interesting. There's also a separate study yeah. that uh, looked at the last recession to see what happens when you have unemployment benefits last for a longer period of time. And interestingly, in that case, we find that people's job skills finally match the job they ultimately secure when they have a little bit more time. That's actually good for the whole labor market because you don't want someone who's overqualified taking someone else's job. Absolutely. All right. Well, Jill Schlesinger, thank you so much for giving us some insight into these numbers. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Stay safe.